think of uh, Euro Mediterranean econ economic relations. So, after, of course, the initial uh, shock of the corona crisis, therefore, we are asking our speakers uh, to bring in a special focus on the implications of the corona crisis and solutions to strengthen the social market economy and free trade. Uh, let me welcome our speakers. Uh, we have in the plateau uh, Dr. Karl Heinz Parke. They, he has already been introduced, I guess. And we have the Eurodeputy um, Jose Ramon Bausa. And also, we will have a Professor and Dr. Uh, um, Disak Assur. So, in this framework, uh, I, I would like to ask uh, a few questions. So, first one um, is to Professor uh, Pake. Welcome to our plateau and to this conference. Um, dear Professor, Germany has suffered less than others have from the economic COVID crisis. What can the Mediterranean region learn from Europe's biggest economy? Well, uh, it's true, uh, compared with uh, countries like Spain, uh, Italy and many other places, uh, which uh, rely to a greater extent than Germany does on the service sector, Germany has done comparatively well. However, however uh, I think we could have done much better, and I'm going to talk about this uh, in a minute. On the positive side, Robust global demand for industrial products made in Germany has uh, helped us to recover relatively quickly. Industrial production today is almost on a pre-crisis level uh, and even uh, the renowned uh, German car makers cannot really complain. Also, record tax revenues in previous years, uh, in previous years have helped uh, to maintain public sector debt on, let's say, manageable levels. Because of that, there was a scope and leeway for fresh borrowing and generous uh, rescue packages. So that's probably what others can learn from us, at least in theory, sector diversification and uh, fiscal responsibility uh, during boom times. But that brings me uh, to uh, my other point and uh, potentially even more important uh, point. Germany has a very unambitious government. We could have uh, paid back more of our debt in uh, pre-crisis years, or we could have invested in world-class infrastructure, which we have not, for example, um, in uh, digitalization. N uh, dis digitalization. Neither um, has been done. Uh, and in fact, Germany was not really fiscally responsible, but uh, quite lucky. And now we are trying to fix things uh, while being in a crisis mode. Uh, if you look at this uh, uh, from a bird's eye view, this is not really a recommendable German model. Thank you, uh, Mr. Packe. I have another question for you, if you don't mind. And it's very interesting what you've said, and probably not what comes to people's minds first when they think of Germany. Uh, you're not just the president of the Normans Foundation, but also the vice president of Liberal International. Before COVID, you must have traveled a lot. Where do you see comparative advantages in the many region? Well, there are some uh, hard facts like uh, labor costs or uh, the very young uh, workforce. But there are also cultural elements which are very important and could play a major role for the economic restart in the region. Uh, and uh, a controlled appetite for risk, as one may say, a culture of success and uh, also of business failure. Um, success and failure are two parts of the same thing. And the overall entrepreneurial spirit are crucial. I see more of all of this in many places uh, outside Europe. The legal framework uh, or the access to finance is certainly better in Germany, but uh, uh, 
we have to ask ourselves what do what do German students want from life? And the answer is very often a safe job in the public sector, uh, at least a relative majority, uh, majority of them answer. The late Guido Westerwelle, our dear longtime party president and a former minister of foreign affairs, he once said, life is not a dress rehearsal. People in Europe often forget about that. Um, we need to help young men and women in the MENA region to fulfill their dreams, to create jobs, to create opportunities for others. When we talk about the restart of economic relations in the Mediterranean area, Europe should focus on that. Take a look at the bilateral trade agreements between the EU and the MENA countries. They focus on industrial goods only. Digital services are not part of them. Uh, that is, uh, uh, if you uh, want to express it uh, uh, cynically, this is the spirit of the 20th century and not the spirit uh, of the 21st century. We should allow startups from the MENA region to operate in the EU, EU without any further trade barriers, and not only in industrial, but of course, uh, more so in uh, uh, service areas. Free trade is a key driver of economic growth and development. And uh, when I say free trade, I mean free trade in goods and in services. That's right, I agree with you. So you will mention in free trade, that's very interesting, because value chain diversi diversification and nearshoring are being discussed widely today. So this is how economists describe efforts to source primary products closer to home. For example, not from China, but from Tunisia. So do you think this is a realistic scenario for the European Mediterranean region? Well, actually, I hope it is. But it all depends on a single question. And that is uh, if the right decisions are being taken now. Look at the case of Mexico, for instance. The overall chain integration with the United States due to free trade is very good. But during the uh, COVID uh, crisis, the Mex Mexicans had the opportunity uh, to be in a kind of perfect uh, position to replace Chinese suppliers. However, the investment climate uh, in Mexico is pretty bad right now as a direct consequence of uh, government decisions. They did not gain from the de uh, de uh, situation as it was at all. I hope MENA leaders act more wisely than that. If I had a single factor to be sorted out, one single factor, I'd probably talk about the importance of the rule of law and of investment security. Rearranging supply of value added chains is a very costly endeavor. Let's take the example of a European car maker sourcing from China. Firms have invested a lot of time and money to establish business relations with Chinese companies. And they have spent a lot on quality control uh, and uh, um, all that is connected with it. If you are considering to give that up and to invest again in a wholly new place, you really want to have 100% safety and 100% certainty that the investment will pay off over a longer period of time, notably decades. The good thing is we have shining examples in the MENA region. The growth of the automotive industry uh, in uh, Tunisia is a success story. Of course, I'd like to see more of that, and I'm confident that we will see more of that in the future. Thank you very much. So let's go now to ask a question to uh, Mr. Jose Ramon Bausa. 
hello, Jose Ramon. How are you? Good morning. It's Good a morning. pleasure to see you. Hope to yeah. see you, not by video cam, but personally, as soon as possible. Sure. Pleasure to see you, too. At least to speak to you now. So let me ask yes. you a question, Jose Ramon, if you don't mind. Um, we are now living and just, you know, immersed in a, a digital society, which is so important, and our destiny is to be all... Uh, we are going to work in these digital uh, issues. So let me ask you, how the digital economy, how you reckon that the digital economy can contribute to economic development and job creation in the mineral region, especially among youth, because, you know, youth, the unemployment, everything is, we are people at risk. So what do you think about this? Yes, well, uh, first of all, I think... Um... It's so interesting to, to know that the COVID-19 pandemic has put a lot of stress on all the Mediterranean economies, both of the EU sides, uh, on obviously in our partners, and the economy of many of these countries depends on tourism. And unlike European countries, their vaccination rates will make it very difficult to recover for the 2021 uh, season. I want to, to point this because it's so important, the, the question. Yes, for you have to talk about the digitalization, but we had to see that before that, there is another part of the, of the economics that's not as linked to the digital, uh, digital point of view, but obviously for other opportunities uh, in the economic uh, line. Because I, I continue with this, with the pandemic, because some endemic problems will get worse, worse sorry, like youth unemployment, which directly affects to the political and social stability of the southern neighborhood. And this is so, so important. And in this case, the COVID-19 pandemic has also created a window of opportunity for the economic reform in the MENA region, especially on the one criterial area, that is the digital economy. The EU is still the main trading partner and primary source of investment in southern Mediterranean. And even if regional or global powers has enhanced these presences. This is so, so, so important because we had the great uh, leverage to push for the, for the reforms that will create the jobs of tomorrow, especially for young people. And there are some important measures to take advantage of this. First of all, promoting connectivity and unrestricted uh, intern, internet access. In this case, to maximize the development opportunities in the digital economy. Secondly, we need to invest also in education and training of apprentices, of exchange of students and professionals to transfer skill between both regions. The third one is uh, as well very important. We must, prom we must promote an entrepreneurial culture through trainings and financial, but also operational support for startups and entrepreneurs. And the four, development aid can also be used to develop the, pri the private sector and safe environment for uh, these MSCs uh, companies. This is the key point because we should learn the lesson for the COVID-19 pandemic and invest in a more resilient economy that provides young people in the Mediterranean with jobs. And with all of this point of view, it will contribute to social cohesion and a stability in the region. Investing in digital economy is investing in the future stability of the Mediterranean. But in this case, and we are now getting out of a crisis, a crossing finger, it's so, so important, the partnership between private society, the private side, and the public one. It's the moment to work together. It's the moment to create the stability and to create the tools that we promote to entrepreneurs and companies that they are looking over the point in, in which they are established in order to see no possibilities. We have a, a, another example in this case, uh, not only in the southern neighborhood that we are talking about, but as well in the east neighborhood that we, we have seen that countries as uh, Poland or even uh, Hungary and that, they are investing in new companies. They are working as well with young people at the S side of the Schengen space, creating new opportunities that there's people that has a 
important uh, of um, training and educational and formational level, and they can work together. For me, it's the key point. Private and public society, they have to cooperate, they have to work together hand by side, and this uh, it will be one of the fundamental topics for the future for both sides. I, I agree to you, and uh, I think this is unemployment, oh, of course, and youth un unemployment is, is one of the worst or the you know, more, worst problems we have at this society today. today. Rate of unemployment for youth is uh, approximately 40, 45 uh, percent, and which is uh, something we, we have to think about. So thank you very much. Uh, we'll make maybe a, another round of questions. So let me, I don't know whether Mr. Asur is in a, here or is connected. So if he's not, I will go on with some other questions for our speakers. And I have here just a few questions for you, both of you, the, all the participants. So um, let me say, or let me ask you, um, Mr. Paquet and also uh, Mr. Bausa, what do you think are the challenges and opportunities uh, for this current situation? I mean, what, what challenges and opportunities does the current situation create for the for the economic sector in the Mediterranean region. I mean, uh, how should they be addressed? Because we, we've been talking about the digital society and so on, the unemployment, all the problems we have. But what are you know what you reckon are exactly the uh, the uh, problems that the challenges we have now, and how how could they be addressed specifically? If you have any idea about this? Well, um, if I may start, uh, Thank um, you. Uh, you know, um, I can only repeat what I said before, uh, that uh, um, the Mediterranean area uh, has all you need uh, um, from the economic uh, point uh, of view uh, for uh, a sustained growth. Uh, you have a young population, you have an entrepreneurial culture, people are ready to take risks. Um, we can uh, see this uh, also in the migration flows. You know, uh, um, uh, there is a lot of uh, courage uh, and uh, audacity uh, in the uh, southern Mediterranean uh, countries to really uh, get forward uh, in creating a better future. The problem seems to be political instability and uh, the lack of a reliable rule of law in many places. And um, where you, um, uh, in those places where you have a relatively stable environment, take Tunisia, for instance, which is a prime example in this respect, you can see uh, real progress. And I think um, uh, this should be the main task for us uh, Europeans to support uh, these efforts uh, by allowing uh, for free trade and uh, really uh, uh, considering a new wave of what may be called nearshoring uh, of uh, investment, you know, in the last 15 to 20 years, most of the foreign investment uh, flowing from Europe to the rest of the world has gone to uh, Eastern Asian countries, the big growth poles uh, in the world. But this uh, may change, uh, you know, if the Mediterranean area uh, really comes to terms with its uh, general uh, investment conditions. I think that uh, there is great scope for a re-establishment of a dense uh, network of uh, 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 a Mediterranean uh, a division of labor across the Mediterranean and integration uh, with Europe. So this is my uh, hopeful picture. And of course, I may say one word as to the role of the Friedrich Naumann Foundation and its uh, uh, Madrid uh, office in this respect. It is one of the major purposes of ours uh, to support this process 
by featuring the dialogue with politically uh, active uh, uh, people who can really make a difference in this region. So we are looking forward uh, uh, for the post-COVID time uh, to intense, further intensify this discussion and the so, uh, support to support the development prospects of this wonderful and historically extremely important region. It's very interesting what you are saying, also what um, Mr. Uh, Jose Roman Bausa said about um, yeah, the digital society and so on. So, uh, Mr. Bosa, um, what, I, I, what do you think are the um, main vectors we should invest in? I mean, either in Europe or in Spain, for example. Because, I mean, in Spain we have these uh, companies which are, you know, their, their size are not very big. They are not great, great companies. Yeah? They cannot invest um, a lot of money. Uh, for example, on innovation, on digital uh, issues. What do you think are the special or essential vectors we should take care and invest in, specifically maybe in Spain or either in Europe, if you want to just span the branch? Well, I think that uh, the main focus is there is a lack of regional cooperation. This is so important. It is because if you if you if you look at the, at the regional Schengen area, we have cooperation between the whole countries, uh, even much or less. But we are in continuous cooperation. Our companies, our small and medium uh, enterprises, they can afford to to run for some opportunities that are inside or regional or region. This is. The, just the opposite that we see, we are seeing the many regions. There is a lack of uh, cooperation, and this is another goal they had to, 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 to take in advantage, that is the young people. If you don't have cooperation, young people can go to, to the right and the right uh, side of that. For me, it's so, so important that this cooperation is not only uh, linking uh, money on the table, this is much more than that, because if you have money, but you don't have the culture or how to arrive to that, you will be the, 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 the how to say, the, re the righteous people uh, on the room, but you will be the powers in order to arrive to conquer the future. And this for me is so important. We have to, to, to get this interpret and interpreter uh, culture, we have to go by the hand of the private sector. Why do I repeat uh, that? Because in my, when I was former president of the Balearic Islands, we had the, one of the worst uh, crises uh, in, uh, in the world. Of course, the whole uh, countries and of course the whole regions. But the only way to get out of that is was not because of the money, it was of the opportunities that we had to look for and to, to go hand by hand by the private sector. That is one so important key to, to, to avoid this lack, of this lack of cooperation and to put on the table the cooperation between the private and the public sector. And this is the way we have to go in the line and give opportunities to the young people because is if you don't have access to the internet, as we have uh, said before, we don't have the social cohesion. We don't have stability in the, in the region because previously there is a complicated situation between this uh, political, social, and economical re uh, situation. It is so complicated for these countries and the many regions to have the possibility to get out of the face the problem that they have. And this is where they have to appear, the European institution, in order to not to say to the other countries, look at what I'm doing because I am better than you. No, never. Look how I'm doing that in order, as if you can see that is probably a possibility for you, let's do it together. Because it's so important, and this is another experience. It was in the Senate of Spain. I was the president of the Spanish delegation in the uh, assembly for the um, uh, Arab, uh, what to say, I wanted to say so, so, so fast, uh, 
European um, assembly for the European uh, countries. This is the, one of the first things I thought uh, is the UPM. No other southern neighbor countries wanted that some of the European countries get down in order to say, that is what you had to do because I'm maybe better than you. Never. Look at why I'm doing because if maybe this can be a possibility for you, I know how to do that. And I want to be your partner in order to get out. For me, is the key point. Lack of regional cooperation that we had to avoid, give opportunities to young people in order to the private public cooperation, this partnership. And finally, let's think in the future. No things, just uh, both sides of the of this step because it just has to be in order to go hand by hand, not to say anybody, look at what I'm doing because I'm better than you. It's my personal opinion. Okay. Thank you, thank you very much, Jose. Um, so let me ask the last question to Mr. Paque. Uh, well, this, is, this question, you, you've, you've already talked about a, a little bit about this, but I, I want to ask you again because it's, it's a very important issue where we are, and it's the main issue of our conference today. So let me ask you this question, uh, Mr. Paque. What do you think are uh, the measures that are being put in place to promote a social market economy in the Mediterranean countries? Well, I can come back to what Jose said. I perfectly agree. Uh, you know, uh, it, there is no lack of wonderful, wonderfully talented people uh, in this region. Uh, and, uh, but uh, if, if, we, if we want uh, to build something up together, uh, uh, let's say to have a vision of a new division of labor around the Mediterranean, what do we have to do? Well, the North, we have to figure out clearly that we, 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 we have to uh, take to, to invest our share into the game. Because if we do not do this, people will come to us. We're going to get a big migration problem. And it doesn't make sense that young people end up in our countries when uh, the, 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 uh, uh, the northern African countries and the MENA regions needs them desperately to build up their own countries. So um, we have to realize it's a common effort. On the other hand, the MENA region uh, uh, countries have to realize that they have to massively improve the governance of their countries. And the governance must exactly work in the way Jose said. There is a, a, a private sector and a public sector, and they have to work in a complementary fashion. You know, no country in, a world, in the world is economically successful with a, a failed state. <laughs> or uh, with a, a corrupt political uh, elite. Uh, you, you, ne you need uh, to get a decent ap administration. You need to put up all things together, which can help to improve using the, uh, the possibilities uh, of the potential of, your, of, the, of the people. And when this is, uh, and, and the rule of law and some very basic things, uh, uh, for investment, which I have been mentioning, then I'm very optimistic that a lot of firms in countries like Germany, given uh, the scarcity of skilled labor that we're going to get in the next few years due, due to the baby boomer generation leaving the labor market, we're going to get very low unemployment rates in our countries, a scarcity of skilled labor. So there is ample incentive for firms and not only for huge, big ones, but also for medium-sized, small and medium-sized firms to look over the Mediterranean and say, okay, there are all these wonderful young people there. Why don't we help them to develop the skills? Why don't we invest in these countries? So this must be the atmosphere, the political climate in which we cooperate in the next few years. And I am, as a liberal, I'm a, I'm a, a notorious optimist. I can't do otherwise. So uh, um, uh, let's do it together in the next few uh, years. 
uh, after uh, uh, COVID, let's cross fingers again uh, that we reach soon a situation after uh, COVID uh, that we reestablish uh, our links uh, and work together uh, to get one huge integrated economic and social area, Europe plus the Mediterranean uh, and also the south, including the southern rim of the Mediterranean and not two regions in the world which turn their back to each other. The, uh, this is my vision for the future and I hope we're going to advance a little bit in the next few years. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Paki. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Bosa. Uh, it's been a pleasure to be here with you and talking to you. I hope that this cooperation between the public and the private sector gets, you know, really definitely uh, in, in, in our countries and uh, you politicians, uh, please fight for this. Okay. So thank you. It's been a pleasure and we have to finalize our conference. Thank you very much and see you next time. Hello, Christina. Well, thank you very much for your moderation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank We've you. got a few questions for you. you. Don't leave us yet because okay. we got a few <laughs> questions. Hello. Sorry. Sorry, Christina, to interrupt because That's we got great. some questions from the public and they asked me oh, about, about ask them, okay? <laughs> okay. Um, so let's so go I've on. got I've got a few questions, even if you already talk about that, uh, both of you actually, but Rita is asking about how to make sure that the youth is part of the restart and of the respective policies, how to raise awareness of real action, especially thinking about the youth unemployment. unemployment. How can we make sure? I mean, because we've been talking a lot about involving the youth people, the youth and involving the young people, but how can we do that? If you want, Please, I can. Jose. Jose Ramon, go ahead. Yes, first, yes, thank you so much. It's a pleasure to see you as well, Valentin. And I, I, will, uh, I truly, truly, absolutely agree with uh, Professor Paquet in all the uh, centers that he has said, and I used to say almost, I don't know how many times in, in a day, that is liberal have to be optimist because it is in our DNA. This is so, so important because it's liberal. It's not just a political question. It's a way of life. And it is the point that we had the different opportunity. Uh, we, uh, in this case, as Valentin has said about what we can do for the young people. Yes, to let them work. Yes, to let them uh, to ha have the possibilities of the evolution that they have. We had to invest in them, but not, not just because it's supposed by the public sector to invest. No, just because we feel that they are not the future, but the present. And in that cases, some of the most important, for example, startups, some of the most important uh, new companies, the, the owners of that are teenagers, 20 teenagers, 13 years. They are an, in an absolutely different way of thinking and a different brain waves that we have. And what is supposed to that from the public sector that I have to, 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 to do? Yes, following them hand by hand in order to give them opportunities. For me, is the key point because some uh, maybe I'm, I'm saying that many many times because the, the the key point is private, public, but in this case, young and not too young people. I'm not too young, but I almost as young as you, Valentina, and, and young people that you have this question, but we have to believe in you. We have to believe in you, but not because you have to support because you are young people that you don't know how to write. No, because we have to learn a lot of you no. and we have to open mind and to open together this window of opportunities and not just to think as a close uh, uh, building that the company, that the public sector is. No, just let's break the windows. Let's broke break the, the 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 not the rules because we have to do but let's change the things because if we always say do it do the same things we have the same results and we are yeah. not in that case we are liberals i had to do different things yeah may Definitely. i add uh, to uh, what jose wonderful how uh, to, to what uh, jose already wonderfully put uh, well i don't know whether the question is put right you know, we don't have to mobilize 
the young people. They mobilize themselves. They are extremely highly motivated. You know, I have visited a lot of countries in the world, and notably in, um, in the Arabian uh, area and in Africa, I have seen uh, many, many young people just start to uh, found a business, get up and work, work hard uh, with a lot of entrepreneurial spirit. It's not a question of lack of the entrepreneurial spirit. It's a question whether this entrepreneurial spirit can be made to work in a stable institutional environment, whether you know that your the investment you do today, whether into people or into buildings or into machinery, uh, will survive because uh, uh, for the next uh, years and have a reasonable rate of return, uh, because the general uh, climate is uh, in in the economy and in society is such that you don't have a civil war, that you have global good governance, and uh, you have an open-minded society which does not want to close up everything if there is uh, uh, some pro if there, when there are some problems around. You need this. Uh, open atmosphere and uh, that can uh, sorry only be created by a credible government with uh, a liberal stance a fundamentally liberal stance uh, and not backward looking <laughs> but forward looking and uh, if, when you have that and when it's relatively stable you need a couple of years of reasonable political right. stability otherwise it won't work definitely then, i think I think you uh, both. I think the migration flows will turn around. Thank you. Thank you very much. I think you both answer also the next question that was about the entrepreneurship spirit. As you already said, it is already into the young people. We don't need to push it further. So thank you very much. Thank you very much, Christina, thank for you, your moderation. You. Thank you both of you for being at the other side of the screen. It is always better to have you here, but maybe for the next year. Uh, we are coming back with Esther that sees at the other plateau. Thank you very much.